Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back, back. Welcome back to another episode on the Naked Truth, Truth Podcast. <laughs> With your host, Jaylon and Tori Franco. That was not a fart. That was my chair. Yeah, okay, just, that's that's what they all say. <laughs> Whatever. It was not, I promise. Um, before we get started, just want to say thank you to all the patrons. We yes, appreciate thank you, guys. you guys. Thank you to everybody who is still rocking with us and mm-hmm. listening and enjoying the, the show. We appreciate you guys. Very much. And can't thank you enough. We so. love you guys, all of you. Mm-hmm, Listeners, mm-hmm. patrons, all of Become you. Become a patron for as low as $5 a month. What is this episode about, Tori Franco? Well, I wanted to kind of talk about um, social media for a second, if we can. We, we are quitting, guys. We're done. Just kidding. <laughs> Well, no, here's the thing. It's a prank. Here's the thing that's been bothering me. Hmm, Tell us. Is I've been really vocal on my social media about where I stand politically and with certain hot button topics that have come up, I've been very like opinionated and I'm always opinionated, I feel, right? Yeah. But I've, I've expressed my opinion, so I guess so much so about certain topics I've never insulted anybody. I've never like come at anybody. I've just simply given my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that like a lot of people have just unfollowed me simply for my opinion. Yeah. And if I unfollowed every Trump supporter or anti, well, actually, no, I do. I do unfollow the anti-trans people and anti-gay people and anti-black people. But like if I unfollowed every single person that I disagreed with, I'd only follow Jaylon <laughs> and like a few people in my family. Yeah. I wouldn't follow many family members. I w- like, you know what I mean? So it's just this crazy thing, like people that I was friends with, um, and you know, cause I got like really annoyed, just unfollowed me on Instagram. And I don't know which post it was that they like, didn't enjoy (laughs) i don't think it matters honestly it doesn't matter what 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 annoys me is that people can't have like civil discourse and and disagree with one another without being still like without keeping some some sense of like cordiality again if you're being a racist bigoted piece of shit i'm still not gonna call you a racist bigoted piece of shit but i'm also not gonna i'm not gonna follow you or associate with you yeah, but I feel like you have called when your people are saying some, some sorry, when people are saying some fuck shit yeah. that is inappropriate. You have stood up. You have said something. Oh yeah, and I I always will. I always right. will speak out. Here's the thing. Um, nobody's ever gonna get me to shut my fucking mouth. No. Okay, it's just not gonna happen. No. Um. Not only for the fact that I'm just an opinionated person and that's I I own it and it's not bad to have opinions and to express your opinions. I can't help but express my opinions. That's who I am. Yeah. Sometimes it pisses people off. Like I piss you off sometimes with with my opinions. (laughs) I do. I trigger her a lot. (laughs) But I'm but that's it. I mean, I always really mean well. Mm -hmm. And I'm not out here trying to spread hate or anything like that. And if you disagree, you're entitled to disagree. Um, And you're even entitled to unfollow me if you disagree. I just don't understand it. Because here's the thing that pisses me off on Instagram. There is a feature that most people know about that you can not only unfollow somebody, but you if they follow you back, you can remove them as a follower. Yes. And what I've been noticing is these dumbass bitches have been unfollowing me, but leaving me as their follower. Yeah. And tell me I'm an egomaniac, but that pisses me the fuck off. Don't make it seem like I'm dick riding you and I'm still following you and you just unfollowed me. Right. No, I would feel the same way. 
if you don't like what I have to say, unfollow me and you all the fucking way. Don't just leave me in there. Right. Like, help me so I don't have to worry about it. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I've come across, y'all know where we stand on on the, uh, the Gaza situation. We're very pro-Palestine. Mm-hmm. We're not anti-Jew. No. But we're anti-genocide and we're pro-Palestine and we've been very vocal about that, Mm -hmm. right? And I consider myself a liberal and I consider myself left-leaning with my political beliefs and I've made no qualms about that, especially if you've been following me since fucking 2020, right? But what... Like, and I come across many accounts that I follow for whatever reason that are pro-Israel and anti, anti-Palestine anti and, you know, like um, Trump, many Trump supporters. And I've come across them. I'll roll my eyes and just keep and moving, keep it along. moving. Like, yeah. So, like, I don't understand this where, where people, I don't understand where we, we became as people like scared of opposite views you've seen how badly i've been attacked on social media yeah yes i've seen how bad you get people come for you and it's ridiculous and they don't come to her with like facts and trying to like debate her it's literally personal attacks (laughs) like they called her uh, they told her not to use her gay brain and that she's stupid and right right it's like okay i I can't i can't stand i sat y'all don't understand okay i've been debating i've been debating the opposition my entire life my whole father's side of my family are a bunch of trump supporting republicans um i've i've been debating and and whatever these types of people like my entire life i sat in a fucking room when my grandmother was dying um, in a hospital bed room and um, had my entire family look at me and tell me, oh, you're not a liberal. Um, you don't know what you believe. Basically insulting my intelligence. And then I had one distant cousin say, the only reason you feel this way is because you're gay. It's because you're a lesbian. You wouldn't lean this way if you weren't gay, right? So, and I think that's the biggest insult. Literally. Like, you're just, so, okay. So if I wasn't gay, what? I would just believe everything that you believe. So because I'm gay, that's that's it, right? And it's just an insult to my intelligence. And so when this particular person said, like, stop using your gay brain, I'm just like, you're literally just saying that I'm stupid and that the only reason why I feel the way that I feel is because I'm gay. Well, the only reason why I'm, I have this position is because I'm gay. And what does that say about my intelligence? You know what I right. mean? Right. And then when you stood up for yourself and you gave them a piece of your mind and started insulting them. Right. Well, this person, then, ooh. this person, this particular person that we're talking about, and this is not what this episode is about because fuck that person. I don't even know who they are. But like this person particularly was like, oh, please, you believe your, I bet you believe your own bullshit, which to me is an attack. Right. Like I'm giving an uh, I'm, I'm posting a video about what I feel on this particular subject and all they're saying are attacks. And it was attack after attack after attack about, oh, you bet you believe your own bullshit. Get out of your gay brain, blah, 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 which there's no substance there. There's nothing substantive, stu- substantive for me to like hone in on and, and try to give facts about. So. I'm not, a, I'm also not above matching your energy. Mm-hmm. And so when I came back at this person, at first I was like, yo, all you're doing is throwing jabs right now. They're like, oh, you're a snowflake. You're that sensitive that you're seeing what I'm saying as jabs, like trying to gaslight me. And then I got pissed. And then I fucking went for the jugular. And I think I called them a dried up, washed up boomer lesbian. Uh, and basically told them to leave me and my gay brain alone and then they're like you're so fucking sensitive see you're the you're the one attacking not me and to me it's like it's really interesting when you come across people like that because they'll come at you and then when you defend yourself they clutch their pearls about it yeah (laughs) 
even no, i know god forbid you do it but they have every right to say whatever they want but you the second you want to say something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're the fucked up one yeah it's like the trolls who were talking like who were making comments about my gayness yeah on mine and my sister's post and i tried to respond and like you're not allowed because they just they say they run their mouths and then fucking block you it's so annoying but regardless how do you feel about my opinionatedness on the internet i love that you're opinionated i love that she's it tori for anybody who doesn't know but everybody who does know tori like she sticks up for the things that are right in life like and what we think is right is not right to a lot of people and that's why they attack her because they go against what she believes but honestly black lives matter free palestine trans trans people like she fights for what she for humanity really she doesn't think for herself she thinks for all people and i love i love when she fucking educates people and dummies them down because they don't know how to fucking respond then they come with insults and then when she sticks up for herself then they gaslight her to make her feel like she's the one attacking them like as if she started it like i don't know for me yeah it's crazy i love that she defends what she and i don't in. and i don't I don't claim to to have all the answers, right? Like, I'm not above admitting, like, I don't know all there is to know. And if somebody were to come with actual facts about, like, certain subjects, I'm not saying I would never close, like, I would never change my mind on a subject or whatever, or, or at least say, okay, well, that's something I should definitely be looking into more or whatever, right? I don't claim to know everything. I'm very opinionated. I have very strong beliefs. And um, I'm not afraid to admit those beliefs or talk about them. And yes, my mouth has absolutely gotten me in a lot, a of, lot of fucking trouble. <laughs> I've gotten attacked by many people for opening my mouth. Um, but I'm not going to stop, right? <laughs> but I, I don't, and I don't understand, um, I just don't understand like, the lesbian comment like the gay brain comment because yeah. what can you say about when like i literally all i posted in 20 in 2020 on facebook was hashtag black lives matter that was it that was my post i didn't say anything else and the attacks that i fucking got for just simply saying that a, a, a simple phrase i was personally attacked by family members for because here's the thing, I, I wrote Black Lives Matter, and then my aunt wrote hashtag all lives matter, which is just, I wanna punch anybody in the face who says all Literally lives that's matter. that's so fucking annoying. Yeah, I, I just can't with that fucking argument, so stupid. I'm sorry, you white privileged old lady. You have all the privilege in the world where you don't have to worry about a police officer pulling you over and then pulling you out of the car and beating the shit out of you and then shooting you in your house because, you know, you called them for help. But nope, you're going to get shot in the fucking brain. No, you don't have to worry about that, nor do your white privileged children or grandchildren. Thank God. But the black people here, yeah, black lives do fucking matter. Well, this that was what my aunt tried to um, to to say was like oh privilege white privilege doesn't exist <laughs> that's you, laughable i know but she was like you want to talk you want to talk privilege um what did she say tori's privileged she lives at home with her mom doesn't work doesn't pay rent blah 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 blah, blah. like basically calling me a freeloader and like somebody came at her and was like first of all that's not that's not um white privilege that's technically class privilege like there's a difference right because she lives on long island like not all white people can do that Mm -hmm. right but at the time i was i wasn't unemployed and i was in school full time and she like came at me again because yeah but there's such a huge difference between you being privileged to be home and the safety of your own home as a white human versus a black person who gets to be home like that i forget her name the one that just got shot recently for calling the police. Oh, what, what, what? Oh my God, it's. No, I want to get her name. Ma- Massey? I feel like we need to say her name. All right. Like Sonia Massey, who 
calls the police for help and she gets gunned down. So yes, Tori got to stay home and have that privilege. I don't understand how you're comparing the two. Right. Cause that literally makes no fucking sense. Cause to I me. could be guaranteed that if I call the cops here for any reason and they came in my house, they ain't shooting. They us. wouldn't be afraid of me bo- boiling some hot water. Right. And they wouldn't shoot me over it. Exactly. So, and not only that, you just conf- confirmed that there is white privilege. You just said she gets to stay home. So if you call that, it's say privilege doesn't exist, but then use her as an example. You just, what are you saying? You're contradicting yourself. Well, yeah, it didn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense whatever she was saying. <sighs> um, God. Like. She's annoying. Sorry. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, she's somebody I don't want to breathe the same air no, as. No, I, I don't want her breathing my air. But anyway, the point is, is like I've been attacked like this all my life, so uh, it's it, it doesn't really fucking like bother me like that. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting to me that right. people can't. We live in a time where literally people are so fired up that they can't just have regular conversations with people who disagree with them. Right. And it's now gotten to a point where it's like, I don't want to associate with you if you don't agree with, don't agree with me. Yeah. Now here again, the caveat is if you're being hateful and saying harmful things, no, I don't want to deal with you. No. And I don't like all, all my cousins on my dad's side. I don't, deal with them anymore because they say dumb shit like we've already talked about like right. oh you know go listen to the couple, the pride episode yeah, the pride episode so like that was about them so <laughs> yeah so the point is like it's okay to disagree it's okay to not particularly like what another person on the internet is saying and it's okay to stay and and listen and let it bother you and let yourself be uncomfortable you know and and like let yourself curse that person out uh and have that visceral reaction to people when i had the tori franco show i saw a girl on tiktok who went viral because she made a fucking song or whatever about being nice to men who hit on you and um, she went viral for the wrong reasons because she's a very right-leaning um, person and she got a lot of fucking hate. And when I first saw her video, I had that visceral reaction where I wanted to like mess- comment and be like, you're a fucking idiot. What are you talking about? And then she ended up being on my podcast. And is she somebody I would fucking invite out for drinks? No. Is she somebody I agree with? Absolutely the fuck not. But like, we actually had a cordial conversation and I looked at her. An adult conversation. Right. And I looked at her and I said, I virtually disagree with every single thing that you stand for and and say, but like, I'm willing to have this conversation with you and be nice to you because you're still a human being and you're entitled to your beliefs. Right. And that's that. So I just don't, you know, I just don't understand why society is so afraid of um opinions it's it's just weird to me how 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 do you how, like are you afraid to give your opinions on on the internet i used to be i was because first time trying to do social media i was afraid of doing anything i'm like and it wasn't even like political stuff it was just me bringing my kids to soccer and I'm like who the fuck is going to want to see this the people are going to judge me and think like this is a waste of time or whatever now no 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 I think that when we speak on certain topics and give our opinions on it I I feel like this is what we're here for we have social media we have these platforms if you want to not follow us for whatever fucking reason the good fucking riddance I always tell Tori if somebody unfollows me that's the type of follower I don't want in the first place Right. Like I don't need your negativity. I like to have a following where where people can agree to disagree respectfully or have a following where people are like, damn, I'm with you. I hear you. I want to have a platform where we could stand and talk about topics that because we can't do much. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing. So if we could speak on something and, and have somebody see our point of view respectfully, then I just did something. 
You know what I mean? So for me, no. I, I'm glad that do, we have platforms that we could do that with. Do you feel like people with platforms have a responsibility to give their opinions on certain subjects for the greater good? No, no one's reason. Everybody has their own platforms. They could use it how they want. I'm not going to judge anybody on that. Do I think they should? Absolutely. Especially if you have a huge platform, huge platform where people admire you on and, and love watching what you have to say or do. Why not? Why not use your voice? Why not, you know, have people see what you're ta- what, what what's out there in the fucking real world? Because unfortunately, behind these cameras and everything like that like we play this so we can get our minds off of stuff so we're scrolling through tiktok to get our minds off of things but reality is shit is fucking happening and i think that we need to expose it we need to say what's happening we need to say like put our opinions out there i think it's very important that we use these platforms we have them for a reason i really do believe things come into our lives like social media and us having like because i have a small following compared to tori and whoever else but even my small following, I'm going to share how I fucking feel. I'm on live all the time and I'll say what I want. I don't care. I think it's important. I think when it comes to the little guy, right, the, the, the underdog in life, I think we should always stand up for um, the, the, the people who are being oppressed and right. stuff like that. Yeah. And so speaking out against that, I think is important when you do have a platform and I think when you have a platform and you have the ability like uh, Yuval, that guy who finds the girl mm-hmm. and, showing, and and Ayame, yeah. they both have these massive platforms oh, yes. and they're amazing. And they use them to raise money mm-hmm. to fundraise for people in Gaza to mm-hmm. get people out of there because at the end of the day, when your government is not fucking doing jack shit about anything and the world right. is just sitting idly by and letting children and, and literally and, a genocide happening before right, your letting, eyes letting people die then at, at that point yeah i would feel like if i had a massive platform the way that they do i would also feel like it's my responsibility to or my duty to do, try at least to make a difference mm-hmm. you know yeah no i agree with that i agree with that and look at even these platforms the biggest like cause she's got how many followers she's her and millions him, millions of followers she took the chance and was like fuck it i'm going to stand up for what i believe is right yeah. you have it fucking kilani kilani did the same Kelani thing d- yes oh my god i follow her now because i'm just like holy shit she's like literally the coolest human and and that's the thing too is like on a smaller scale of course i don't have millions of followers i have hundreds of thousands but still on that smaller scale i'm not afraid to lose followers Mm -mm. to say what is on my mind and what i believe even if what's on my mind is yo i gotta go take a shit like i'm not afraid to offend people or make people uncomfortable with my opinions right because good you should be uncomfortable with my with my opinions that means that there's something to fucking learn step out of your comfort zone for a second you know i'm not making you uncomfortable because i'm hating a group of people i'm making you uncomfortable because i'm trying to speak up for a marginalized group of people that you've been taught is different and because they're different you should hate them or not want them to exist in certain spaces you know what i mean and i don't understand that i ideal i i i I just don't what i don't understand and what irks the fuck out of me is when people go oh aren't you guys worried you're gonna lose your following or or um what you're doing is a little is a, a little erratic or whatever the word that person used I don't like that. I don't like when people's brains go to worrying about our following versus humanity. Yeah, I don't care about like that's so scary. No, I don't either. I don't. This this doesn't fucking matter to me. What matters to me is that there's people fucking dying, whether it be people in Palestine, whether it be black people here in the United States, whether it be people in Congo, trans people, trans people. It doesn't matter. People's lives are at stake, and that's what I care about. Um, if that I means- would, you could never, I'm sorry, I didn't no, mean to cut you off, but you could never, ever, ever hear me say, 
oh no, I'm not going to talk about that because if I do, then I might piss off my followers and they might not follow mm-hmm. me anymore. Never. Bye. That to me is, no, I, I'm yeah. just, that's a cop out. That is me. a cop out. That it's, is... it's, it's, it's a reason to cower away from standing up for something that you believe in. Mm-mm. I don't care if every single follower of mine just unfollows me tomorrow. Like in f- however many months, in nine months, I'm going to be on track to becoming a therapist and getting myself a full-time job anyway. I don't need social media, quite frankly. No, we you really know? don't. And I honestly, love it. even if we needed it, I don't fucking care. Right. People's like lives are more important than my following, Tori's following, and whoever fucking following. Yeah. We don't fucking care. I think it's important to send out a message and hope that it will change somebody's mind who thinks a certain way that when reality, it's right in front of your face. It's written in black and fucking white. And to be honest, I'm not even too pretentious enough. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not pretentious enough to say that my opinion on the internet is somehow going to change somebody's mind or make somebody see the light in a situation. At the end of the day, People are going to believe what they want to fucking believe in right. life. I just feel it's my duty and my maybe my civic duty, not just to fucking go out and vote and do what I have to do in that arena and to try to learn as much as I can about the people who are in office for better or worse, right? But it's also my duty to speak up and give my opinion where I feel like, holy shit, that thing is wrong. What like what's happening over here is really not okay. It, it, it's not fair to this group of people, or it's not right that this group of people is dying in droves and whatever, whatever it is. So if that and, and if that pisses people off, so be it. So be it. Then right? be mad. Stay mad. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, get mad. Stay mad. Live your life. I, yeah, I don't care. Um, because I'm going to say what I got to say. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And, and nothing nothing is going to stop us from saying what we want to say. So send all the hate you want. Fucking we don't care. At the end of the day, we go to bed happy. Like yeah. you think your comments affect us? It, they really don't. No. Like you're wasting your time. Actually, <laughs> We sit there. We actually read it and laugh with each other. Like we're like, are they fucking for real? Uh, right. But even even that, like... This is the Naked Truth podcast. It's not the Naked Pussy podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we say what we believe is true to us. You know, we, we, we're authentic with how we feel what we believe to be true. And we say it with our chests. And if, and if people are triggered by that, then, I mean, go tune in to the Naked Truth pussy podcast i don't know what to tell you yeah i don't know when i see something i don't like on social media i just keep fucking scrolling i don't even give you five seconds of my time this five seconds that you do get that i'm listening to it i'm just like fuck it like you see me when i scroll you yeah she's watching me like it's triggering because <laughs> I, I she don't even st- no patience. i'm like can you like you didn't even stay for like the first five seconds of the video and you're already scrolling how do you know you don't like I just the video know. don't waste my time I can't stand videos that don't get to the fucking point. Just get there. And when you get there, I get annoyed because now I am pissed that I stayed and wasted my time because I thought you had a good point and yet didn't. And yeah, yet just waste my time. Wasted o'clock. time. We scroll but a lot though. Well, we no. Do. No, we do at night. At night, yeah. We got to stop doing that though. Yeah. I don't really get to see Tori. I, I, I actually <laughs> like, well, so, but a lot of the times lately while you're scrolling, I'm reading. So like I'm yeah not, that's true. I'm not she really on read. my phone as much as as you are. Needless to say, I just um I don't I I, I don't understand people on the internet, and I, I also feel like people get really comfortable running their mouths on the internet. Um, when like they disagree, versus. If they heard something that they disagreed with in person, they wouldn't say the shit that they say online. So it can be it can be a very toxic like p- 
place to be when you're a creator who's not afraid to give your stance on a situation. Um, it can be the, the the environment can get very toxic very quick, mm-hmm. and I've noticed that with with you know the political shit that I've been talking about or the fucking um, trans topic that I I can that I've been talking about. Like I've literally when I was talking about um, Biden and all of that and giving my weighing in on that, mm-hmm. I had random people just like right out the gate just being toxic idiots you know i've had people in person when i went you know when trump was running in 2016 before he became president um i was obviously giving my opinion to a bunch of trump supporters and one guy he somebody that i'm pretty decently close with he looked at me and he literally was just like you're fucking stupid but he was he's he was like you're stupid and i was like well, I mean, we were drunk having the conversations or whatever, but like, he just flat out called me dumb. I was like, damn. <laughs> I can't wait to find out who this was. Damn, hostile. All right. Um, I do want to talk about Project 2025, though. Okay. And I feel like it's important that we address this because a lot of people are saying, well, no, Trump's not a part of it. And um, it's all fake, fake news, blah, blah, blah. Um, no, he is part of it. Let's just make that very clear. And you've done the research, right? Like you've seen. I read the document. I mean, not the full 922 pages of it, but I skimmed through it. You remember? I read it out yeah, loud. Yeah, you read it out loud. To you. Like one day I sat here f- on the couch for like an hour and a half and just went through the document. And the document's scary in and of itself. And, um,. You know, the, the, I mean, there have been like, there's a lot of, it's been, it's already been proven that the people who have written this document were either former advisors in Trump's cabinet or somehow tied to Trump. They mentioned Trump explicitly in the document multiple times that, oh, we want to go back to this Trump policy we want to you know when Trump was in office like they make a lot of nods to Trump in the sense that you can tell they are meaning this document for the 47th president to be Donald Trump so whether he's attached to it or not which he is attached to it and he knows about it he knew about it and he knows who's involved and he's chummy with the people who are involved even if that weren't true these people and this this heritage foundation who is a prominent right wing foundation um organization they have intentions of the 47th president being Donald Trump and they want, and they believe to the utmost extent and degree that Donald Trump will be the one to carry out a lot of these policies yeah so for them to do all of this research you have people with phds and 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 all of these um prestigious people on the right uh to do all of this research and 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 analytics and whatever to even get this document together 922 pages for these people to truly believe that donald trump will carry out a lot of these policies and bring them to fruition tells me that they've done their due diligence in in finding out if that is the case do you get what i'm saying yep no no no, i do like i'm not gonna bring forth to you a proposal that i am i'm not gonna invest my money in getting a team together to bring forth a thousand page proposal to Mm -hmm. you if i think that that money is going to go to waste when you look at it and you're going to look through it and be like, fuck that. No, yeah. fuck this whole document. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? No, I know. These exactly. people are confident enough, whether he has anything to do with it or not, which he does, but even if he didn't, even going with that, these people who have written it are not, I mean, they're DeLulu, but they're they're not going to waste their money and energy and resources in bringing this document to life for the the republican candidate to just shit all over it they know that it's going to many policies are going to be accepted not all maybe but many 
Right. And so I think we kind of have to get real about that. And even if, even if like taking the argument of, um, well, Trump would never, which let's be fucking real. He says one thing, does another. The guy lies more than that rug over there, um, lies on the ground. So even if he would never implement any policy in the document, do we really want to chance that? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm not taking no fucking chances because even if this thing does, because it will, it, it will play out. My daughter's rights, and forget my own, but my fucking child's rights are going to be taken away from her and so many other people out there. Like that's the bigger fucking picture. Like across the board on so many different avenues as well. Like not just reproductive rights no there's so many so much marriage there. equality is yes. on the table um like you can't divorce so if you're in an abusive relationship you're fucked like you're st- you're stuck in that no thank you veterans rights are on the table yeah. i mean a lot of it isn't very explicit like they don't explicitly write we don't want gay people to be able to be married they are a lot more explicit about how they feel about um marriage equality a lot of like nods to fatherlessness and how fathers need to be in their kids lives um and all that bullshit you know it's like very red pill stuff that yeah. they're that they're talking about um i i really um i can't sit here and say i saw anything about slavery again i did i skimmed through you know what i mean because i'm not sitting and reading a whole 922 page document well what i heard from work when they say slavery coming back it's not literal slavery where they're in the like corn uh cotton fields and picking cotton it's more of so where black people's pay will be a lot less than a white person's pay right but i and they can't and you can't like fight it like you can't if you are discriminating a black person from getting a job you have the right to say i don't want you to work here because you're black yeah they want to bring discrimination back for sure they want to get rid of affirmative action i i do know that um you know, because people think that affirmative action means, oh, let's just give the black person who didn't earn it. Why do you think they're calling Kamala Harris a DEI pick? Um, do you know what DEI is? No, it's the first time I'm hearing it. Di- uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is like, you know, DEI departments are um, departments in, in organizations that make sure that um, diverse populations are hired or being treated equally. Okay. So a DEI hire is basically like you just hired that black person because you need to meet the quota of the black person <gasps> to be uh, hired. That's not cool. So, so a lot of people on the right are saying that she's the DEI pick. You know, now that she's the presidential candidate, she's the DEI pick. Like we just picked the arbitrary black woman to run. Wow. You know what I mean? That's such an insult. It's not even funny. Right. Forgetting the fact that this woman literally is so educated. Right. Whether you agree with her or not, you like, again, whether I agree with certain people on the right who have written Project 2025, I virtually agree with none of the things that they say. But I can't deny that this person has a fucking PhD. Right. I can't. I can't deny that this person is a medical doctor and has gone through the college and schooling, whether they're on the right or the left. She's so great that Trump her, himself doesn't even want to debate her. Right. Like yeah. that's how amazing this fucking woman right. is. Yeah. So he's try the, again. He's backing out of the, the the debate. Yeah. But then trying to gaslight and like his base his supporters will literally hold on to every single thing that this man says and just Trump could be like, the sky is purple and everybody would be like, oh, yes. this guy is right. fucking purple. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So Trump is just like, what What he's doing now is he was supposed to debate Joe Biden. Oh, there's Cappuccino. We got to give him. We got to give him his carrots. Love him. Um, he was supposed to debate joe biden on september 10th and he agreed to it and it was via abc right um that was the the station it was going to be televised through and he agreed to it when it was joe biden then all of a sudden joe drops out of the race now it's kamala now you got to debate kamala on september 10th now he's using 
uh, the fact that he has a lawsuit against George Stephanopoulos from ABC as a reason why he can't do that debate. He's saying it's a conflict of interest. Well, you had the fucking lawsuit and the lawsuit was going on when you were when you agreed to it to debate Joe Biden. Now all of a sudden you can't fucking do it. And then he's saying, well, September 4th, we're debating via Fox News. And Kamala said, why September 4th? And why are you making the rules when we already had September 10th on the table or whatever? Let's do September 10th the way we were, sup- we were supposed to do it. And then we can revisit the idea of also going to Fox News. Like we already had this in place. Yeah, it's set in stone. What are you trying? What are right. what do you have up your sleeve, Trumper? Right. So Kamala said, "I'm not doing your September 4th shit." Good like, for her. Meet me at the debate stage on September 10th, or else you're a pussy, basically. And that's so. What she, he and, is. and she said, "She's like, I'll be there regardless. Like, if you show up or not, I'm gonna be there. And if you don't show up, you're basically just showing people that you're a you, coward. You pussied out. Yeah." absolutely but he's gonna try and spin it like oh she didn't show up to september 4th debate because at first he was he tweeted this fucking idiot tweeted and said i'm not debating kamala harris until because she's not officially the the democratic nominee this was when joe first stepped down he tweeted from his own truth social or whatever the fuck it is. He posted and said, I'm not debating her because she's not the presidential nominee yet officially. So, no, that's not happening. Well, now she's officially, she's been made the official presidential nominee. And he still won't debate her. So he's just now coming up with different excuses. Tell me this doesn't sound like kindergarten. At its finest. Right, it's right. like, you meet me. You know why he said the fourth? It just clicked. Why? Because he can't say, because um, he could go say, well, she didn't meet me on the fourth. It's before the 10th. Yeah. So right. you're the pussy, not me. Yeah. No, he's going to spin it. He's yeah. going to completely fucking spin it you as if bitch. she's the one who's afraid. <laughs> he's going to be like, I showed up to the fourth and you didn't show up. So now I'm not showing up to the 10th and you can show don't, up. And then his don't. entire base is going to eat it up and be like, Kamala pussied out of a debate. Meanwhile, Kamala could probably, most likely, she's a lawyer for a living. This is what she does. She fights people for li- for a living. This bitch could fucking run, run circles. circles around him. Oh my God. The guy knows he's going to look like a fucking fool and his whole team right. knows he's going to look like and a let's fool. And be, let's, be, let's get one thing clear. I'm not like... I wasn't like a Kamala fan. Same. I wasn't either. Now I am because I just want her to beat Trump. But not only that, but she really has been talking about some amazing stuff. Yeah, I mean, she's, and it's like, she could use some work for sure. Right. In my eyes. But, but at the end of the day, no I po- finally feel like our country has some sort of hope. Right. Even watching them yesterday at the, or what was it, like two days ago where she was talking. At talk- the Philly rally? Yes, at the Philly rally. Like, coming out to the song she came out to and then her and like the crowds being excited like it's like holy shit we have a fucking fighting fighting chance, chance yeah for our country yeah i haven't seen that much like hype or hope since obama and ran since obama yeah yeah nope i haven't seen it since then either and it's it's like exciting again yeah it is like i'm so invested i'm like oh my gosh so it's for me for me with her it's not necessarily her really it's not i'm not completely sold on her per se i like her running mate oh yeah i like tim walls tim um walls i like best. his i like his record and stuff like that to be honest i don't really know kamala's record like the way that i know tim walls's record um but I, she doesn't i'm voting for her but she doesn't like impress me the way that like tim impresses me or bernie sanders or even aoc um impress me you know like but them together though yeah yeah it's it's really it's it's definitely like you can see the difference in the energy between trump and jd vance it's it's very weird jd vance is a very like uh, awkward personality um And they don't have much chemistry. Like they don't, the two of them don't really like. 
because there'll never be chemistry because Trump is more of a, is so much in his ego that even though you're the vice president, I'm still above you. It's not like a team thing with Trump and his vice, pre- the vice yeah, president. Yeah, I personally even, I don't think Trump likes J.D. Vance. Like, really? I, yeah, I don't see. So why see, would he pick him? I'm saying, though, when they're together, it doesn't look like Trump actually enjoys J.D. Vance's, like, not that I'm saying that's what's needed in a vice president, president, like, dynamic, but, like, Barack Obama and Joe Biden, they had a, a, a relationship mm-hmm. of some sort. Yeah. Even if it was just a business relationship, like, hey, we work together, we got it. They were chummy in that way. Right. And it's just, see, I get the vibe, and it seems like Trump, like, can't stand to be around the guy, or, like, I don't know. It's just funny. It's a funny dynamic. Whereas with Kamala and, and Tim Walz, um, you can tell they they have they don't have like the same connection that again that Barack Obama and Biden had because I feel like Biden and Obama had like a weird friendship going on there. Yeah. Um, even Trump and Pence before Trump turned on Pence, um, they had like a chumminess about them. I just don't see that with JD Vance and Trump. I- I'm just not seeing it. Like, you could kind of tell that Trump actually liked Mike Pence. Mm-hmm. And right now, I'm just not... Maybe it's J.D. Vance's, like, energy or whatever, but I'm just not... I don't know. I'm just not seeing it. I don't know. At the end of the day, I finally feel like we have hope, and I'm excited to actually go out and vote because I was going to honestly throw my vote. I told Tori, I was like, either one, we're fucked either way, and I'm not for it. I'm not. I'm not giving my vote to either one of them. So I was like, yeah, Biden was not I was going to vote for Biden just because I don't want Trump in office. But like it would have been it would have been a tough thing, you know, like to do. Yeah, because I don't I'm not a Biden fan whatsoever. Right. Um, He's done some decent things for the country, I think I I do. I I, I don't feel like he's a horrible president, but um, I think he fucking sucks. That's just my opinion. I mean, he can't form a fucking sentence. It's not that. Like, you can't... That's fine. You couldn't form a sentence, but you uh, literally being okay with a genocide fucking happening, you can't even fucking call a ceasefire, pisses me the fuck off. That just tells me enough about you. You don't care about human rights. And you sat there and you you called your own self a Zionist. He did? Valai, there's an interview where he says, I am a Zionist. And the guy who was interviewing literally laughed. It's on... I'll show it to you. You know what? Wow, I didn't know that. I saw it on TikTok. I was fucking flabbergasted. Israel has been unwavering. Uh, during the debate, you said that we're providing Israel with all the weapons they need and when they need them. Uh, back in April, uh, $26 billion in aid was sent or was approved to be sent to Israel. Why? I said defensive weapons. I denied them offensive weapons that they were using, 2,000-pound bombs and the rest of it, because I made it real clear they cannot use weapons that we provide them to, in fact, use in civilian areas. And that's why I put together this plan. My question is, why why is your United States and Colonel support for Israel so strong? If there weren't in Israel, every Jew in the world would be at risk. And so there's a need for it to be strong and a need for Israel to be able to have, after World War II, the the ability for Jews to have a place that was their own. Well, you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. And the Zionist is about whether or not Israel is a safe haven for Jews because of their history of how they've been persecuted. Are you a Zionist? Yes. Now, now you'll be able to make a lot out of that because people don't know what a Zionist is. Do you know what a Zionist is? I just ask questions out of way, sir. I have been very supportive of the Palestinians. Flat out said he's a Zionist. There's then you can't deny it. His but like video, it's proof. Right, and I'm not trying to defend the man or anything, but like the man, even here, he's like sleeping while talking. You know what I mean? Like, right. But you literally called yourself a Zionist. You're doing yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. to stop. No, no, no a I'm not. Fire. Like I said, like I said, I I think Joe Biden, it, when it comes to his stance on, um. Palestine, I think he's a cockroach in my opinion. But 
again, domestically, I, I don't think he's done such a horrible job. Um, but I, I don't want him as our president. Same. I'm over it. Um, yeah, I'm over him. I'm glad he stepped down. He did the right thing. Yeah. Thank God. So I have respect for that. We appreciate you for that, Br- Bryden. Call, Bryden. Call him Bryden. I definitely, res- you, I, it takes a lot of, um, and it, even if he was forced, I mean, but you can't really force him. What what could they have done? Threatened to kill him? Like he's, no, he's, 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 his own he's half he dead say. anyway. He's three quarters of the way fucking dead. Seriously. I think there could be somebody actually like, like he's a puppet literally and tugging in their yeah, strings for him. He, it's yeah, a no, possibility absolutely. that Joe Biden could actually be dead. No, I'm not. kidding. Um. All right. Anyway, that's that. We, we love you guys very much. We hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. Yeah. Yeah. And until next time, guys. Peace out. Peace out with your wangs out. Hey. 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 Uh. On that note, love you. I will. <laughs>